Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dan Hussey with Zaner Ag Hedge, bringing you our strategy of the week update here uh, for the agricultural products. We're going to talk about oil a little bit, though, because uh, obviously the energy markets, we touched on that yesterday, a big player into um the run-up in not only the <laughs> the inflationary pricing uh, of just about everything we've seen, but certainly um, corn and soy products for their use in biofuels. Okay, um, let's begin today. I don't, I didn't really have um, a trade plan to put out there for this uh, strategy of the week. And what I mean to say is, I don't see, I didn't see like a great. Um, Honestly, it was a very busy day, uh, but um, other than that, I didn't see a very big um, opportunity that was screaming at me just yet. Um, we talked about some levels yesterday. That 1580 area held as support uh, yet in, in the overnight session. The market rallied then up above 16. We talked about how we wanted to see it stay there. I don't love that we failed to kind of stay there and we actually fell back here off of uh, the $16 handle uh, for the may soybean uh chart and and that's really I'm, I'm i'm into the may charts now uh march is a thing of the past for me uh and it's the it's same same to goes for uh, crude oil we're, we're into april charts there as well um so still a positive day right uh soybeans in the may uh closed positive four and a half three quarter cents uh, above yesterday's high, I mean, it's continuation, higher highs and higher lows, second day in a row. It's a trend higher. Is it, um, you know, is it the type of close we want to see or the price action we would have want to see? No, we would have loved to see that 20 cent uh, pullback that we saw from the highs. I'd much rather seen that than put to, you know, a 20 cent rally continuing through. Um, but it, nevertheless, now that this 200 day or 18 day moving average is starting to pull up to the 1550 area, up to where support is near, um, I can't rule out still that there might be, we might be still part, a uh, part of a, a more complex correction that would, uh, take us down to a test into that, uh, into that, uh, indicator anyway. Um, November beans, I did want to talk about that because look at them. They're almost back up to contract highs here. So the, the last couple of days, it's interesting to see that we've seen such, so much more of a uh, participation here from new crop but i think that that is also because well quite frankly we're, we're also at such a you know discount here right um but uh, but the fight over the acreage and the need to buy those acreage i think is now starting to really kick in um so you're going to start to see this new crop soybean i think uh, really kick its kick itself into full gear um i think we need to be above 15 dollars there um not from a price a production standpoint, but from just a, we need to get those acres secured and locked in if our balance sheet is going to get this tight. Look, China is still going hand to mouth with beans. We saw them, well, I believe that was a flash sale today of unknown destinations, but red China, right? For all intents and purposes, um, that is nine, eight, eight or nine times out of 10 um, out of Asia. Um, the 1460 and three quarter close today for the November beans, the highest close uh, on on record there for the November uh, 22 beans. So highest contract close there for new crop beans today. Uh, and look, old crop hasn't uh, hasn't pushed that threshold yet. So a little bit of divergence there. I'd like to see um, like to see us get higher. But you know what? Come to think of it. I think it might still be a higher high. Pardon me for like zooming in on the camera here to get close to the chart uh, because my screen's over here. Um, but that actually might be, yeah, we closed 1596. It is. So this is still the highest contract close for soybeans. Darn, that makes me feel like I should have bought a lot more into the close. No, uh, I'm very comfortable with where the position was. If you were paying attention to the video yesterday, uh, I talked about, uh, and, and actually let's just hop right into that, kind of pick up where we left off. That's why I didn't put together like, oh, these are the options we need uh, to take a look at this week or could be some cool ideas uh, because I really think we need to pick up where yesterday's video left off. And in the soybeans...
do, do, do. All right. We were talking about potential support um, from yesterday's, the prior day's high uh, at 1581. Um, that support was simply a break of that high, uh, broken resistance now a support, um, or you know what was resistance at the time now support. Uh, the market had d traded you know, through and to the you know two days worth of highs uh, and today pulled back to kind of test that area again we held trend line support against the lows i mean a level that was otherwise um pretty well broadcasted on on the chart um and then uh it you know i would have liked to have seen this hold uh you know a bit of this channel uh, or a little bit more of a channel kind of a you know, pull back but uh, or, or I'm sorry, trend, but uh, I think we'll get there. Okay, sorry. Uh, now the I'm getting distracted by other things too here. Crude's kind of moving around in after hours. It's an interesting. The volatility there is just incredible. I haven't seen that in I feel like since the recession or 2008 kind of kind of time frame. Uh, it's it's awesome. Um, it's a good time to be a trader. I don't like this full 50% short though off the highs from 1610 down towards the 1583 high out low here. 1596 is that 50% area. We had a double top uh, here of resistance into today. Um, intraday that is kind of uh, concerning because if we do certainly go below this trend line here, um, you need to be concerned with where support going to catch the market if it is. 1546 lows to the 1609 highs, however, the full 50% retracement there at 1577 um, could be the next area. And look, the negative 23% target, that is a downside target from this 50% pull, um, that 50% area, or, or I'm sorry, this FIB um, that I have on the chart here. Uh, I use those negative 23% targets um, to look for the potential projection for where this FIB, this 50% will go, the negative 23% of that, uh, that FIB is a, potential technical target um what else did i want to touch on this chart like i said this is the highest close we've had for soybeans um contractually so i think that that is something to take away from today being uh, a very big positive um outside of clearing the book right we we went through highs we went the resistance yet again and proved that there's nothing above 16 that's going to stop the market if it wants to go there but this market needs to prove it wants to stay there because we've also been unable uh you know to see a close above 16 and that's um that's not something that we we, we would want to uh continue to 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 witness here we need to see the market get up there stay there otherwise it's just going to be a failed attempt to, you know to break out of yet another big key level uh, and when the market exhausts itself, you know, after enough attempts of trying to get above 16 here, we run the risk of seeing one of those nasty hair on, you know, hair on fire sell-offs that we saw. Oh, geez, you don't have to go too back far in the chart to see um, to see some of that uh, that price action. Um, you know, back here. Um, nevertheless, uh, the market we would expect from you know, from this point on, uh, to prove itself above 16 or not. Um, in the meantime, we've got some like, you know, higher base camps that soybeans have been forming here. Uh, the, you know, at, at least in the May contract, that gap fill at the 1560 area is just a really good, uh, a really good, simple level to find on the chart to, to, to understand where some of these other technicals align with it. We've got a nice channel uh, heading higher, but you know, I can't dis discount that if the soybean market wants to trade in three waves down one, two, the third, the wave down here could measure down towards 1521 half 1520. That'd be equal legs down. That's if we break below this trend line, certainly if we go below 1580, I think we'll head. We could head down to 1520 and, and certainly below the, the, the this low here uh, at 1590, uh, 45. Excuse me. It's also the extended long. Uh, you know, highs to highs. Uh, it's where that 50% is, and, and it's also almost where channel support is. Um, so you've got a lot of fibs 
trend lines and confluence of levels. Uh, and if we look at the May daily chart as well, uh, you'll notice that that 18 day moving average right now at 1540 um, is basically down there as well. So a move down to hit that level, maybe go a little bit below it like it, it usually does and then snaps back above. That snap back above is usually a buy signal or an opportunity for entry for me. Um, let's see times like here or you know here, here. You know, when the market's, when, you, when you're ready for that trend to, to occur. Anyway, um, we'll see what happens. Bullish above, bearish below, 1580 at this time on the soybeans in the May contract. Let's move on to corn here. And uh, remember, guys, if you're joining us late, I see some people joining the Zoom late. I, I, there will be a recording uh, a sent to everybody um, here. So, uh if you missed it in today's webinar recording email link whatever the the email i'll send i'll also include uh, a link to yesterday's uh, but you can find it on my youtube channel anyway um or on facebook i went live there as well where i talk about the setups going into yesterday or after yesterday's close uh, into today's um price action that we might be looking for um and then you, you kind of get an understanding of how we're building, you know, building into this trend and um, and the market is clearly gone into a point a period of uh, price discovery. And that means sometimes lower uh, price discovery means we, we discover where support and resistance is. And so, you know, trading sessions like we saw over the last couple of days here, um, they were price discovery where, you know, support was. We gapped up to discover where resistance was. And then we came back down and found support. Uh, now we find ourselves in a range, but uh, the most positive thing to take away from today's close in soybeans, doesn't matter which contract you look at here, uh, the highest close um, for the contract across the board. Okay, let's move on to corn. Um, soy, I don't have too much else to say about the, the soy products. Soy oil and meal still seem to be very well in, in, uh, in very well entrenched in uptrends. Uh, it's good to see the positivity on both those charts. You, you you just have to look closely to see that. Okay, we're clearly in uh, uptrends here. The market is you know uh, channeling higher, and there's definitely um, there's definitely some. Um, some pullbacks and some reasons to still be a bull. Could we be getting exhausted? Could a top be forming? Sure, but I'm not here to you know play uh, look into my crystal ball or you know throw darts at the board at picking tops and bottoms. I'm here to tell you what we see on the chart and we go with what we see uh, and what the chart's telling us um, rather than trying to make it into our own self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Uh, but for corn, uh, May corn here, 649 and a quarter closed on the day um december corn 596 trying its best to get above that six dollar handle um i think that's that's one of the unspoken um or least talked about things here in the market right now which is that december corn is trying to break above six dollars right now and that will be something uh, here's the chart of it we'll look at that here in a minute but if you saw today the new crop contracts the chart of the new crop contracts just looks a lot stronger uh, this is the chart of december corn it is just at its contract highs it looks very strong starting to almost turn parabolic doesn't mean May corn doesn't look bullish or isn't in an uptrend, but it is certainly not. Um, it, it doesn't look as as if it's in as steep of a relative trend to what it's been in. Um, today, you know, we talked about this already. May May, uh, May uh, November beans were actually uh, led the way today, being up five and a quarter cents there, um, and was uh, we saw some bear spreading there uh, in that complex. But never mind that. We we got to get onto the corn. Um, Channel support, trend line support, 18 day moving average support, 634 here. Um, beautiful pullback, three waves, one, two, three. We'll look at those in more detail on the chart. Uh, we talked about this a little bit yesterday. Um, 
I love that 18 day moving average on the day on the corn chart, that red line. Um, it just, I'm not saying there aren't some fake outs and pullbacks through it. And those are some warning signs when you should be, you know, maybe worried, but second you snap back above it and we're in an uptrend or in a downtrend and you go back below it, you just got to get, just find your way back into your, into the position with the trend and hop on that train. And it just keeps on trucking. Um, gap is still filled here, open here on the corn. I think that is the, the, the unsung thing, uh, the unsung, the uns, the non-singing choir or the, the choir that should be singing. Um, we should be screaming from the rooftops that bull markets don't close gaps and corn is running away from that open gap still. Um, I think that's going to be enough to drag new crop corn up to $6. I do think it's going to be led by old crop here, uh, with May probably getting toward, you know, heading towards, uh, well, it only needs to go to 655 in theory for, for December corn to go above $6 because uh, it's at 596 But uh, I do think we'll be heading towards 7 8 and maybe even above. And we've talked about this before. China paying way more uh, for those bushels in uh, mainland China. Over $20 for soybeans a bushel and over $10 a bushel for corn. So there's room in that, just in that pricing, uh, that international pricing. If the buy and buyer on the end basis trade for uh, for row crops is paying double what we're seeing on the, on, on, you know, for pricing here, you got to imagine or it's not double anymore, but it was at one point uh, or close to it. Um, you you got to imagine it doesn't cost that much to move this product. These products across the Pacific like that, there's room for those margins to be arbitraged out. Uh, meaning the United, the, the pricing of the United States crop and South American crop uh, probably deserves to be a little bit higher. However, now that we find ourselves in a highly inflationary market, we're also seeing that take hold in South America where farmers and producers are more often not more used to or, or more inclined to keep those bushels in their bins because it is worth more in their bins than the, do the pesos or reals are in their bank accounts. The dollars and the currencies are losing their value quicker and uh, the real uh, hard commodities of corn, soybeans, sugar, other products that they can hang on to hold their value and actually become like an international trading tool uh, or an international currency in and of itself for them. So uh, it's we'll continue to probably see that placate uh, the, the, the low production numbers we saw out of South America, uh, meaning that they'll probably uh, be grasping those bushels for domestic demand a little bit harder anymore. Uh, anyway, anymore. Um, so let's break down the short-term chart here. Um, those moving averages are what they are uh, on, on corn. We're so far away from them. We're not going to trade them for um, before next week's so the 100-day, 50-day, uh, and and 200-day um, moving averages. They're just so far away at this point. Uh, I mean, at least I hope we don't. It'd be 75 cent drop to the 200-day moving average. So. Um, Yesterday, we talked a little bit about, let's just get down to the, lots of lines here. Hopefully it doesn't look like chicken scratch to you guys. Uh, but we have now, and I think an important level to now look at for the December or May corn here that I'm a little worried we might see, oh, I'm looking at the beans. No wonder that didn't uh, look right. One of those days, everyone. Watching crude do two, three dollar moves. Soybeans pulling back 20 cents off the high every morning. I mean, I'm a younger guy, but it's enough to put gray hair on your head. I tell you. Um, <laughs> uh, the uh, yesterday we had a little bit of a pullback there. I thought we would have gone, you know, into the 41, whatever. It's okay. You're within a half a penny of it. What's a half a penny between friends uh, or between bulls and bears? Uh, that support held, you know, I was worried yesterday about the full 50% short at the 650 handle. Uh, we wanted to see that break uh, and get up to, well, it was at 647. We, I wanted to see basically which one of these 618 lines breaks, right? If this one breaks before this one, it's a good show that the longs might be in control and they're putting more pressure and allowing the market and allowing, or yeah, and pushing the market price uh, deeper and deeper into, you know, the shorts territory, if you will, or into the bearish territory. Um, this trend line against the high still hasn't broken. And I, I was a little shocked to see it not kind of just go today because we had so much momentum there this morning from the overnight trade. Uh, you know, today was just one of those days where we opened at highs for both corn and beans and sold off. And, and I guess that was just the type of day it was going to be. Um, 
needless to say, this might have this might have constituted a 50 or 61.8 line break. It kind of got there and held. I wish it would have gone to like 52 or 53, like one of those solid punctures through, clearly ran the stops, knocked out all the traders, and then you know now that the buying has subsided, uh, you would see the market pull back into a 50% retracement. 643 being the level here uh, on this chart now. You can see how it stayed above 640 in the 641, 61.8 line. So trading back into that 50% line, you now got upside targets of 654. Those uh, take you in the direction of the larger swing targets from the 635, 50% line that traded. Uh, and uh, we've got, you know, further upside swing towards 670, 670 still underway. Um, so if you haven't yet gotten long corn, Here's my trade idea for everybody here today. Get a buy stop above 650, uh, maybe at 651. I mean, get in on the momentum push above. We could probably look at some options real quick that would um, many of my clients and you know and people I and and, and uh, traders I work with, we're probably all very already long corn and beans. But if you're not already, uh, and if we were looking at this chart and saying I don't have a position on what would I do to get into it. This consolidation in a sideways structure for a week now with the trend line and the market pushing pressure against that trend line, to me, that says we've got a level that once we break through it, it's just the starter's pistol to a race. This is a this is the starting line to a, a race now higher that again, because of those larger time frame charts we just looked at, you know, we have swings towards six twenty seven that we can see and towards seven dollars from other, you know, swings we've seen on the daily and the four hour time frame. This ends up being a very interesting place that you can maybe buy into the market. Let's just say you get filled at six fifty. Okay, we settled at six forty seven. Let's just say you get in at six fifty, six fifty one. For 10 cents risk against today's low, you have now, you know, the opportunity to see if this market will take off and and uh, and head higher. I mentioned we could look at options and to just kind of, I guess, give everybody a little bit of insight into how I think now, because I see a, 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 an opportunity in the market where I think volatility will increase. In other words, the amount the market will move in a period of time, that's volatility. Uh, will uh, be higher. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's up or down. In this case, I think we might go higher, but that this sideways range in corn could easily break to the downside. Uh, I just think that it will go to the upside. And if that's the case, buying volatility in corn right now on, which is effectively buying a call, uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea or sh in theory shouldn't be a bad idea. Um, looking at that May contract, um, you got 64 days till May. That's a lot of time left. An April contract has 36 days. That's not bad. I think corn's cheap enough to go with tighter at the money calls here. Uh, but if we go back to our chart there, Dan, what kind of you know level would you pick? Well, for starters, that contract high at 660 kind of makes sense. Uh, that's going for 16 cents or settled at 16 cents. That's a little pricey uh, for a option that is, you know, I guess it's only 10 cents out of the money. So, um, I, so it's not that pricey. Um, but we could cut down on time here and look at options that go off next week. They're still on the May. I love these weekly options for this purpose. Um, because it's kind of like trading a futures in a sense that or day not really day trading, let's call it week trading futures, right? The idea is that we want a position that'll be a week long or so. Uh, we want to have finite risk. We don't want to worry about getting stopped in a market that's moving around a lot and could in fact go against us enough to hit our stop in the futures where we'd get out and then have to get back in. Uh, unless we're very active in trading or in our trading strategy, that's not going to work out. So more positionally or something, you can set it and forget it a little bit and know that I've spent this much and that's all it can be. Um, 660 calls here are six cents. Now we're talking about spending pennies in a situation where we might be able to make, well, you'll spend six pennies and probably if we go to six, if we go to $7 before the end of next week, 
it could happen if this breakout and this bullish market takes off like i think it should it could happen you could make 40 cents on it uh, but the truth is, is that we'd be, you know, you'd only need to go six cents into the new contract high or rally 16 cents from where we are right now to see pure profit on this, this trade. So if you think corn is going to go more than 16 cents higher between now and not Friday tomorrow, a week from Friday, 660 call and the week four February corn options is going for six cents um it is 16 10 cents uh, 11 cents out of the money 10 cents out of the money uh plus the six cents cost means 16 cents from where we are in the market right now would put you ahead on that trade um i kind of like that idea uh, you could put a lot of them on you could trade big volume on that and you could sleep at night knowing every single contract you bought only cost you three hundred dollars plus commissions and fees and, and whatever else so um and and if corn rallies in the next week 20 30 40 cents you're making money uh, anything less than 16 cents however um you, you you're really not um but um i think it could happen and certainly if the structure we just talked about on this chart uh plays out if it goes above this trend line uh, if we break, continue uh, higher in the little pattern that we seem to be forming, uh, I do think the market will, uh, you know, get to 670. And in that case, you know, this this six cent call and you know would would be profitable. So, or um, be at least worth uh, four cents, right? Uh, or you'd be four cents ahead on it, is what I sh should say on your position. All right, um, let's move on. Corn uh, has a lot of a, you know, a very nice story to continue to tell, but I did want to talk about crude a little bit here today. Wheat, wheat's in its own world. Hogs, um, hogs and cattle, I can't get a, I don't want to say I can't get a read on hogs. I kind of understand why hogs are bullish, but at the same time, they're at such a high premium to the cash markets. I'm worried to even uh, touch that. And they, I like, I want to be a short is what I should say from that fundamental perspective um, but I can't sell that chart. You can't step in front of a freight train like that. So, um, it's kind of a sit, hurry up and wait situation. Crude oil kind of breaking below a little bit of a trend line here. Um, I was not happy to see us get below uh, the 91 figure. Uh, this is the continuous contract. So I don't really like looking at the continuous contract too often. And I kind of didn't realize we were doing that the last time we looked at it. Um, and the reason being is because you don't get a great act representation when you go into roles uh, for where the market is. And this was a great situ example of that. That March crude was at such a premium to the April. April crude is down below 90 already. Um, that doesn't make much sense to me. Uh, how can we just shave off $5 a barrel of crude between that month um, or three dollars whatever the premium was that's that's really high it's usually around 30 to 40 cents maybe as much as 60 but uh not three dollars with that being said we trading we are trading an inside day today uh for that april contract and still broke below that trend line uh somewhat so not a great look for our energies yesterday we had such a good look into the start of the day and then finished so poorly um it was just such a eye-opening day for volatility in crude once again. But when you really take a step back in crude oil, these pullbacks are nothing new. These two, three-day pullbacks of, of $5, it's just what crude does every few weeks, you know, at least once a month, it looks like we've had one. Um, so that being said, we could have put in a support and certainly tested prior support here into the 88 figure uh, and those old highs here and the highs from uh, the month of January as support. So I think we are both flagging still in crude. I think we could still continue higher. Um, many, uh, many of you are and many of my clients are, are positioned with 91, 95 call spreads already uh, that we've been ahead on for some time because we've been in those for some time now. Um, those still I think are the the levels that matter here we want to you can see the market it's going to matter to get above 91 for us uh, I think I think it will it's fighting to achieve that 
95 is is up here you know it's it's a little bit above the highs and i think it would be a place to if i was long crude a good place to maybe take some profits i'd hate to say crude, see crude go to you know 100 dollars a barrel without us but uh, there's ways we can open up that upside uh, and certainly where we're trading right now when we're down like this while buying back those 95 calls unfortunately we got into that 91 95 call spread so long ago back here that as we rallied the 95 calls have gone up so much in value against us we don't want to buy them back because we'd buy them back in a loss we don't have a loss on paper because we have the long 91 calls that have gone up so much in value um, so but the idea is that how do we now increase our position that the call spread has gone in our favor and all we can do now to get out of the 95 calls above the short ones that cap the, the trade all we can do now is um, um kind of just talking you through my thought process right on options trades uh and certainly one that that is apl applicable to this market um that 95 ceiling, if we can take that off at some point, it'd be nice, certainly if we're in a bull market and if we're going to continue to channel higher and find higher highs and higher lows until I'm bullish above bearish below now this 88 to 87 uh, inflection zone. So, so you are aware. So, you know, okay, this trend line, it's just every time, if you notice, every time we have some of these false breaks of these trend lines and you go draw it to a new low and it does it again and again and again. So I think we're just doing it again. Um, I'm more inclined to say this is a, a hold of this again the prior highs here as support these lows as support again uh, and now a move back above 91 and above the highs of today I think will be met with a move towards 95 and 96 so um, we can look at uh, options in the crude market to open up that upside but um, at this point in time uh, you know you have very defined risk against uh, lows of the day here at 88.80 and at 88. Um, if you have the opportunity to buy futures, uh, that is another way of going about, excuse me, uh, increasing your exposure risk here at, with minimal risk, because we do have the low end of a range that we can define risk with, with a stop. And if we get stopped there, look at the chart. There's a line here that if we go through this chart, majority of the lot times that, you know, it looks like a waterfall, uh, that you'd want to be out of it. So, um, all right, well, 89.80, I mean, a 92 call in crude. See, I, and because we were looking at April and we had that strategy in April, um, I would be looking more at the weekly options maybe at this point they're all off the april but i like one maybe a week out into next week Ooh, almost two thousand bucks for a 92 call but you could talk turn that oh wait Okay, that makes sense. This is too, excuse me, um, cooked up in an office all day with bad weather. Oh, and of course, now it's starting to snow here. Um, we were supposed to have this big snowstorm, and it's just starting late. Uh, let's see here, and we are running out of time here with, go to, with the meeting too. I'm looking for a call. I want to own the 92 call. Here's Here's the thought process here. I'm looking at a strike that is just above today's high or somewhere very achievable, right? If we break out of this pennant structure here, you know, the market will continue higher and leave this area in the dust. I want us, you know, get it as low into this area as I can. It's achievable. It's a high we can get to or a level we can get to, but spend as little as we can. Um, the 92 call, I like it, but for eight days, basically just as it expires next Friday, $1,800 is a lot of money to spend on an option like that. You know, that's a couple hundred bucks a day. Um, and by the way, it's still $2 out of the money. I'm going to cut down on the cost of that option by basically doubling up on my bet that we could get to 95 it's just that we'll do it in the next week 
And if we do it in the next week, that means that I'm going to be making twice as much money for a little bit less of a risk because I'll have both my options will be going to their max gain. Kind of that's my mentality on it. It's not literally how the math works out right, but thousand bucks can be brought in by selling the 950 call or 95 call. That means I've just cut the cost down to $800 now. Okay, a dollar a day, a hundred bucks a day. That's a lot better. It's cut in over half. Um, And the most I can make is about three grand on one of them. So you're getting about four to one risk reward ratio, a little bit better than four to one risk reward ratio, right? Um, well, it's right, right there, I guess, isn't it? See, I wish, I wish it was, I was paying like, and I guess you could work an order. Maybe that's the way to do it here is maybe you work orders to try to buy it at about a four to one risk reward ratio. That means if you're going to make three grand on it, you only want to spend about 7,000 bucks on it or 700 bucks. I mean, what's a hundred bucks between, <laughs> between friends on a strike a trade like that. But I'm, I'm kidding. You count every penny, but, um, but that's a way of bringing in an additional $3,000 if we go up in this period and ultimately accounts for if the market continues much, much higher and doesn't let you out of that 95 call. Um, because it's tough. It's tough. But all right. Well, so long as the oil market continues to remain well bid and stays uh, above the lows here of today, I do think we're going to be seeing a, a bottom form that should continue to help uh, support uh, the, the the row crops and I think corn in particular. And we'll see if that uh, see if that can be another driving factor of uh, the next you know kind of leg higher. But just kind of as a reminder, let's see if support can hold here. We're at some key levels for corn, wheat, corn, corn and beans. Uh, the crude market here, I think, is going to be supportive and continue to help. Um, you've got some. Uh, oh, I did mention we were going to take a quick look here at old crop, new crop. Let's look at that uh, very briefly here. July no beans. We've seen a couple days of bull spreading again here. Um, but ultimately have pulled back from the 171 over highs, tested 120. Uh, we basically started the month very strong, pulled back, tested the old highs and that inflection zone. Boy, doesn't this look kind of like some charts of you know other things we looked at, just a little bit of a different uh, appeal to it or, or a little bit of a different uh, uh, um, not cycle. I'll think of the word, uh, but nevertheless, we got a channel trading higher uh, as well. So I think we are trying to put in a base here. Uh, at the very least, I think we need to test up towards these lows uh, and this supportive area between 140 to 150 um, over a dollar 40, a dollar 50 over that was holding the market up that we broke back below. I want to see that tested as resistance now. If it's not resistance. Uh, you know, we'll we'll just continue right back up to the old highs. And remember, this uh, and I've talked about this before, but this contract um, was trading, you know, two dollars over, um, well over two dollars over last year. Um, it, it, it when we got to contract highs into the June period. So I'm at, you know, using this as a barometer. Now that we're starting to see bull spreading again, although we saw today a little bit of bear spreading, you can see us, you know, kind of hook over, and you can see where there's some weight on the shoulders of this chart, and that's where. You know, November came back better bid today and actually ended up better, more positive than the uh, or a penny better, hence the down one penny here on this spread uh, than the April or May. Um, so corn. Also higher highs and higher lows here for a couple of days now. I hate how we're like just holding this resistance trend line. I feel like it's bottlenecking and building up for a breakout higher. You could say the same, you know, about the corn chart too. It's in that little pennant uh, or that flag structure at highs, bottling up, getting ready to break out. Um, has broken out of its contract high. Come back down to test it as support. Forgot about that as well um and that's an important thing to consider 
Uh, the bull spreading, though, that the lack of bull spreading here uh, and the building in of some carry, kind of a weird way of saying it when you're 48 cents over, but it's true. You know, that the, the the weight on the shoulders here have kept uh, that, that December chart for corn uh, rising. And it's a big reason why December corn is basically right at contract highs where the May corn and the old crop is a little off of them, them still and actually just breaking above their old contract highs to begin with. So um, I do, though, anticipate to see, unfortunately, that December corn to become a little bit of a laggard here. Uh, I do think we're going to see um, a breakout higher of this range and, and, you know, this downward sloping trend line against the highs here that we have in this uh, this July D spread. Um, I think that we're building some consolidated, uh, you know, building in a consolidated period here, like a spring to, to explode one way or the other. I happen to believe it's going to be to the upside for all of the fundamental reasons, the inflation reasons, the, you know, everything we've, we've talked about. Uh, and even on the charts, I think uh, we're about to see new crop corn um, really get, uh, get pillaged away and ra price rationed. Um, and that's going to end up, um, you know, helping drag up and, create the acreage or, you know, create the buying acreage argument there for a new crop. Did I say old new crop corn was going to price ration? I meant old crop corn would be price rationed and the new crop corn would be dragged up in the, you know, the next seasonal cycle, which is where we start to argue over uh, acreage or acreage and production for the U.S. We do have quarterly grain stocks coming up here into March. And then, uh, of course, we begin that next cycle, as I mentioned, into the acreage arguments and buying those acres for either corn or beans uh, into the springtime. And, uh, you know, everything from uh, input costs, which are pretty much, you know, I think well accounted for in many people's books uh, are going to be, you know, in the in the pricing plan. But let's also not forget that uh, we had a year here of one of the highest uh, insurance pr uh, insurance pricing uh, ranges here that we're finding in February as well. So lots of interesting dynamics playing out. It's good to see that we have such a strong domestic uh, demand through our ethanol and uh, and soy crush. And I, I got a hunch that a lot of that is getting ready f uh, to help uh, quell some of this uh, gasoline price demand that we've seen uh, over the last couple of weeks uh, run up in price due to demand. Of course, the insatiable appetite for gasoline worldwide. Um, but of crude as well so uh it's a way to combat all that and hopefully we'll get some bigger better bigger and better blending mandates i don't know why uh why they wouldn't it's such an easy to me it's such an easy uh economic factor to play uh it benefits everybody and it looks really good on you know on your uh on your resume for the next voting cycle so i don't know um all right all that being said, still bullish here. Highest closes on highest close contractually on the soybeans here uh, across the board. So all of them at their highest contract close, even though it wasn't their contract highs, uh, we did close at the highest levels uh, for all of our soybean contracts today, keeping me in uh, in the bull camp for for now. So have a great day, everybody. Thanks for joining me. You guys know where to get in touch with me. Six uh, three one two seven seven two seven seven zero one one zero. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, shoot me an email, dhussyatzander.com. Thanks for joining me once again, everybody. Have a great day, and we will be back with you as price action develops. Take care, everyone.